So it looks like we are connecting, which is great. And I just want to make sure that everybody can see me and hear me. So uh, let me know. Give me some some thumbs up. Some uh, let me know if you can can hear me here. And we're gonna jump in as soon as I see all of those streams go live. Let's see, let's make sure. That darn Facebook lagging behind YouTube, I can see you all on YouTube. Um, so let's make sure that uh, I can see all of you all over on, um, on our uh, Facebook feed and I see you there. Okay, perfect. So those of you who are watching on, great, I see Christine was the first one to uh, comment over on our Facebook feed on YouTube. So great. So here we are, you guys. Three, two, one. Hey, everyone. Whew. Well, we made it through another week. Oh, what a week, I'm telling you, right? So I wanted to first off say a big thanks um, to everyone from both uh, my mom and I and my dad uh, for all of your very kind thoughts and uh, we got so many nice messages and everything. Um, my mom, I think my mom is here. She's on the YouTube feed. Hi, Ma. My mom just got home. Luckily, she was able to go with my dad. For those of you who don't know, my pops is having a heart valve replacement surgery. Um, as we speak, they've wheeled him in. The doctors have got him. He's in the doctor's hands. So um, we are so grateful that this is able to to happen during this kind of crazy pandemic time. But those doctors um, uh, over at, uh, at one of the Fresno hospitals, I'm honestly, I'm not sure which one it is to be honest, but they um, are taking care of him right now. So thank you to all of the wonderful medical professionals out there who even during this pandemic are um, helping to save people's lives because this is definitely going to save my dad's life. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, in, um, my, uh, uh, in the waiting time, right? It's the waiting, you know, when you're in a, a surgery, it's like you're in a surgery, you're in there, you know, you're done, you're going, you're, you're going for it. But it's the ones who have to social distance, right? Like my sister is in one place, my brother is in another place, my mom is in another place, all the grandkids are in different places. So it's hard, you know, if it was a normal time, we uh, would all be sitting in the waiting room together, um, probably playing cards and chatting and waiting together. But it's hard um, to be by yourself right, to be alone during this time. And a lot of us have been alone. And um, that's when, as my mom says, you got to dig down deep, right, and um, be brave. So that's what we're going to do today. And on that note, what we're going to do today is uh, something that uh, my grand taught me when I was a little girl. And talk about brave. You know, my grand was born and mom... Um, Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Graham was born in 1912, I think it was, 1912. So during the Depression, she was born uh, in Louisiana, Bogalusa, Louisiana, to be, uh, to be exact, um, from parents, um, parents who immigrated, um, her father's parents immigrated over from Sicily. So she was a first generation American and um, she was a girl, a young girl, a young lady during the Depression years, right? So talk about rough, right? The Depression was a hard time in uh, worldwide, right? And so my grand, 1913, thanks ma, 1913 she was born. And um, so she learned as from a young girl uh, all the way through the end of her life, um, how to make do and mend. Right. And so I think that's what a lot of us are doing 
right now is we're making do and we're mending. We're, you know, looking at, you know, in our cupboards because we don't want to go to the store one more flipping time, right? So what do you make? It's like an episode of Top Shelf looking in your pantry. Um, and so, uh, so Grant taught me a lot of things. I spent a lot of growing up years with my grandparents. Um, which was uh, incredible. And so I was raised by the same wonderful people who raised my mom and my uncle. And so um, my hands, as a kid, you can imagine, as a child, I, we grew up on a, I grew up on a ranch, grew up kind of out of town. And so as a kid, I was always busy, always wanting to do something. And so Gran would teach me things to keep my hands busy. I learned how to knit very early, crochet, embroider. Um, my mom would buy me all kinds of like crazy. I had a spirograph when I was little, all kinds of fun, really interesting kind of crafty things. And Etch-a-Sketch, you remember your Etch-a-Sketch? I loved that thing so much. Um, so, it, so I always wanted to um, keep my hands busy. So. My gran, and I'm going to get to the knot in a second, but I think that some of you will relate to this. I don't know if you guys remember when sacks of sugar or sacks of flour, even rice, I think, would come in a, in a sack, right? And there was a piece of paper that was folded over the top and that paper was stitched on. Right, so to open the flour, the sugar, or whatever, you'd kind of undo that piece of string and you'd open it up, right? And it would come off and the bag would open up at the top. That was my favorite thing to do. I love to take the string off. Well, Gran would save that string. What a surprise. When Gran died, you will not believe the stuff I found in that house, right? And rubber bands, all the rubber bands, every lottery ticket she ever bought, uh, you know, uh, all the containers, like when meat would come on containers, right? She'd wash them, right? Wash them, stack them in case we ever needed them, right? So, uh, so I also, what Gran would do when we would tear that string off the top of the flour sack, she would tie it to the piece of string that she would wind and keep in, my mom will know where she kept it, she kept it in the drawer underneath the breadboard that pulled out in the kitchen. That's where she'd keep it, right? And so we would use that string for all kinds of things, crafts, whatever. And that string, I don't know, was probably at least a foot long, right? So it was, uh, it was um, helpful, right? We didn't throw it away. So one day, my grand, when I was little, um, you know, we always had, we had um, pillowcases that had little lace edgings. We had all those kinds of things. And she said to me one day, she said, Katie, honey, I'm going to teach you how to do some finger tatting. And I went, oh, okay. What, you know, and so I don't know if you've ever done any tatting or if you had a grandmother who did or a great aunt who did, right? But it was a way of making lace, right? Well, in de the Depression, when they didn't have, like, grand didn't have, um, they probably maybe had one tatting shuttle and it probably went to my Auntie Annie because she was the oldest, right? So Gran, this is something that Gran learned how to do, which was make these little loops out of knots and she taught me how to do it and I would get that kitchen twine string and I'd make these little loops and I'd make a bunch and sometimes we'd hang them up or, you know, whatever, I don't know. But I got to thinking about um, what a useful knot that was and how we could use it today. So let me show you what it looks like and what I'm going to teach you today in honor of Gran, who was super brave like we would all must be. I know what Gran would say with this pandemic. She would say, well, Hannah, the Spanish flu came through in 1918 and most of us lived through that. So she said, we're going to be, she would say, honey, we'll be okay right so that's what that's what grand yet my mom she said right right next to the oven and under the breadboard that's where that twine that ball of twine is so you know that janice and i have these balls of kitchen twine that we like to you know lash our project to the boards and stuff with so i i'm going to use the kitchen twine to teach you this knot right 
And then I'm going to show you how to adapt it either to a pendant or an earring, which is over here. So let me bring this to the center, and I'm going to show you what this is. And it is impossibly easy to do. And because if four-year-old me could learn how to do this, you guys can certainly do it. Um, so essentially what it is, is it's a series of half hitch knots that goes around kind of a circle of thread and you hold it in your hand as you do this. Now, I would make these, okay, when I was little out of, you know, kitchen twine or yarn or whatever it is that we had. Sometimes I'd go out to my granddad's barn and, and get some, some twine or whatever. Um, and, you know, I would hang them in my window or I'd hang them on my bookcase or I'd put them in my book, you know, as a, as a bookmark, whatever. I just loved making these. So, um, so uh, the way you do this, it's really easy. Let me put my glasses on so I can see. Essentially, you get your ball of kitchen twine. And if you don't have kitchen twine, you get whatever uh, kind of scrap you have. I know that you probably have some Chinese knotting cord sitting around. I know you've got some cord to practice this, okay? So essentially, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reel off about maybe a little more than a foot. Maybe my length of my velvet pad is about 14 inches, so I'm gonna go 14 and then maybe another seven, okay? And I'm gonna clip it off. Now, what you do is you hold it. I'm gonna get in tight, and it's really easy. I'm gonna do it a couple of times, so don't, don't, stress, don't stress about it, okay? So you're gonna bring that thread and you're gonna wrap it around your hand and you don't need a really long tail like this, okay? I don't know, a few inches, right? You're gonna wrap it around your hand and you're gonna pinch it like this. Now, we're gonna do a series of half hitch knots. And we're gonna open that little bridge between our first finger and our middle finger. And we're just gonna come in and we're gonna do half hitch knots. So this is it. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna make a loop and I'm gonna go over the thread and down. Okay, now I'm gonna make a loop and I'm gonna go under the thread and through the loop and down. Okay, so can you see how that makes a full, what they call like a double half hitch? So let's do it again. Make a loop and I'm right-handed, so I wrap this around my left hand. See, I'm holding it here under my thumb. Pretty nice size loop. Over the thread, make the loop, tuck it under, and pull. Now I go under the thread. The under the thread one is a little trickier, right? But can you see how that went under and through? And there's my second little half hitch. Let me get in a little bit tighter. So let's repeat. Over and under. Yep, Lorraine, exactly. We attach these to our window shades as uh, window pulls too. Over and under. Okay, and as you run out of room in between your index finger and your middle finger, just kind of move it down over and under and tighten. Over and under and tighten okay and you'll know if you're not going over and under because you won't have these nice little scallops here okay so i'm going to keep going over maybe i should have cut a little bit more but that's all right yep this is just the first one as grant would say oh that's all right honey we're just going to do it again over and under okay like that now what you have is a series of these half hitch knots all along the, uh, that loop that you've made, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is this um, piece of thread, this is my working end over here. The opposite end, I'm just gonna pull it through, pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it, and see what happens, how that comes into 
a ring. And that's it. Okay? And if you made this long enough, you could start it again here, right? Go over and under. So what I would do when I was little, I'd get, you know, a really long piece of thread. And I made just uh, a series of these little finger tatted pieces, right? And you could, you know, do whatever it is that you do with them, okay? So what I thought, so this was the one I made with the heavier cord. You can see that it's a little bit bigger, a little bit heavier, right? So what I did was I thought I would want to adapt it to make something out of it. So this is exactly the same. Okay, and it would make a great toggle. This is Cindy Brooke, you are a genius. It could be half a toggle, right? So that this could be the loop portion and you could peyote stitch or wire wrap or something. This is kind of big, but that would be incredible, wouldn't it? It would be really, really great. So let me show you. This I made with two, no, 1.5 millimeter. So we'll do the same thing. Okay, I'm going to get this 1.5 and this is this is ridiculous. I'm going to do two lengths of my board. So maybe about 28, maybe 28 and a half, maybe just a little bit longer, maybe two and a, I don't know, maybe about 35 inches. I don't know. This is a lot, but I don't want to run out. Okay. So I'm going to do the same thing. Short end over here in my hand. Okay wrap it around my hand, catch it under my, you know, my, my finger here, so I'm holding them both. And now, let's go over and tighten. Under, the first one is always kind of funny. Under, see that, how it's under there? Then pull it through and tighten. So there's your full double half hitch. So now over and under. And I'm going to do this at like, whoops, I did that two overs. I can tell. There we go. And under. There we go. I'm going to do this at like eight-year-old Kate speed here. I'm telling you, I <laughs> made these all summer all summer long. Grand, can I use the kitchen twine? Okay, honey, you get it out of the drawer. You can use the kitchen twine. But we all did that, right? I mean, I don't know. I'm How old am I now? 53. I'm 53 years old. So, you know, a lot of us grew up with having grandparents around um, that lived through the Depression and that those Depression years you guys were hard years, right? But it made that generation what they call the greatest generation, right? They It made that generation really um, tough, right? And, and thrifty and, um, you know, smart right? You learned how to kind of do with what you have, right? So I think those lessons that we learned from our grandparents um, that were passed down through generations um, are so important. Um, so I've got, I've got a lot of these in my pocket. How about one day we make pickles? How about we do that? I don't know. Resourceful. That is a, that's a good word for it, right? Though my mom will say that sometimes that resourcefulness was totally tiresome, and I totally agree. But, um, but it's true. You know, you take these lessons from the past and you, uh, you learn from them. So let me see how many of these I'm going to count. I'm going to count here how many I did here. So I did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'll do two. Well, maybe I'll make this one a little smaller. I'll just do ten for this one, so it'll be a smaller loop. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and, like I did, not the working end, but the opposite end. I'm going to pull this so it's tight. Okay. And so this is what ten looks like as opposed to the 12 that I did earlier, right? And so what I did next with this, and you can see I just grabbed a, a roller bead. I'm going to grab this, um, I don't know, sea foam or something. I don't know what this one is. Uh, Picasso roller. And the roller is large enough to get these two in there. And then what I did was, you could tie a knot here if you wanted, but the roller kind of keeps it together. Can you see that? And then what I did here was I did a 12 millimeter saucer. With this roller, I think I still have a couple of lengths of that wrapped link chain. I thought I did. I put them here somewhere. Let me see if I, yep, here they are. So I could attach, I could use this to attach to my, um, to an ear wire or a pendant or whatever. So I'm going to put this through. You can see I did this one, this long view chain on this, right? So I'm going to go ahead and put this through. Or it could be an ear wire or, you know, whatever, you know, or if this is the toggle that you've made for your bracelet, right? Um, and I think I probably did a little too much leather. I did about 28, about 35 inches, probably about 28 inches would have been plenty. Practice with your twine so you don't uh, waste your leather. I still have some cord, some waxed linen here that I've been working with. So I'm going to cut a piece of that, right? And I'm just going to bring it in and I'm going to silk wrap. Now you've been watching me silk wrap all week. If you haven't, if this is one of your first times watching, thank you so much and welcome. It's great to have you. Um, but we have a lot of great tutorials on beadshop.com. Um, how we uh, do this silk wrapping, but essentially we make a loop and I bring one end of that wax linen. You could silk wrap with anything, really. I'm going to make this silk wrap a little bit long so you can see it. You just silk wrap it one wrap below the other. You could also put like a crimp or you could macrame this. There's a lot of ways you could close this off, right? But wrap it until you're done, until you like the looks of it. Pass it through the loop. And on this side over here, we're going to pull that loop tight so it captures that connection in there. And there's no need for glue. This waxed linen really bites on it, you know, really is nice and tight. And we'll clip our wax linen away, like so. And I'm going to clip away my extra cord. Like so. Okay. And then that end kind of falls right into your um, your cord. Now, there's one more thing before I uh, go. I want to share this with you because I want to see if it'll work. I haven't done it yet, right? So, of course, I'm going to try it on air. It all may end in tears, but hopefully it won't, right? So, let's see. This is the teal. That's the teal wax linen right there, okay? So, let's try it again. This will make, yeah, great little key fobs or whatever. I'm going to bring this around again, and I'm going to have next to me some of those six aughts that we had earlier from earlier projects, right? 
So before I tie, this is the patina, it's the 6-1256. Before I tie the knot, I'm going to bring a 6 odd in, and then I'm just going to tie the knot, go under. Okay, like that. Let's see what it looks like. Now, as I bring this around, I'm going to put another one on before I go under. And the six alt, we'll see what it looks like. Again, this is a one millimeter. Okay, a one millimeter cord. So I've gone under and then I'll go through. Yeah, it sits there. Great. So maybe what I do is instead of, I'm going to take this one off. Or maybe, maybe I won't because I can't take it off, but maybe I tie my first one, I go over like this. And as I bring my cord to go under, that's where I put my bead on. Because when you do that over under kind of thing, it makes that scallop. Yeah. And you kind of want to fudge that bead so it sits in the middle. Can you see that? So now let's continue. So we go make a loop and go over. Add a bead. Let me take a few out of there. Add a bead. Slide it down. And now go under. Position that bead right in the middle of that little scallop. There we go. I think when we pull it all together, it'll look okay. I'm just going to do a few, so we will test it out. So that was, did I go over or under on that one? No, I went over. And now the bead. And now we take our thread under the main cord and through the loop. Push that bead in the scallop and over, bead on, under the thread. The bead wants to escape, but don't let it. Say, bead, I'm going to put you in your place. There we go. I would try it plain first, so see how that's looking? It's looking all right. Let's do a few more, okay? Uh, over. Put on the bead. And go under. Push that bead into place. Over. Bead. I'm going to count. I'm going to do about... 10 of these as well and go under and tighten. How many do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let me just do a couple more. Over. Put on the bead. Under. And through the loop. Over, no bead, put the bead on, under, and through the loop. Okay, so let's see, I've got a bead like over here, which I probably shouldn't have put on to begin with, right? But we'll look at this and we'll see two, four, six, eight, nine. We'll go with nine. We'll see what this looks like. Okay. So here's my working thread because I've got a 10th bead over here. Here's my working thread. Let's pull this tight and see what happens. Yeah. And see that, that bead just kind of sits, sits right in there. That's not bad. That's not a bad idea at all. Look at how cool that looks, right? Let's put a 
um, I meant it, I had it in my head, smoky gray mercury roller, I think, is what this guy is. Yes, look at that. That looks great, I think. Um, and we're just gonna, you know, if though, let me tell you, if you wanted to get rid of that bead, see how it's looking a little bit awkward right there. What I could do is I could, I think, let me just see if I, if I open this back up. No, I can't get it off that way. That's okay. This is an under and a tighten. But what I could also do Sorry, this is backwards. I should have just left well enough alone, huh? Bear with me here though. My eight-year-old hands are remembering how to do this. This is an under. So this goes here. You know what I'm going to do? Because these are giving me fits. Yep, I'm going to smash it. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take both of these off because they're giving me... Be very careful. I'm going to use my cutters. I'm just going to clip that bead off and I'm going to clip that one off. There we go. Look at that. All right, now I'm going to close it all up. So my earring's a little bit smaller. There we go. Now I'm going to put this on. That's what happens in live when you're doing this live, right? This would be something that you never would have seen. Yep, I think that's actually better. But look at how cool the beads look on that one. Right? I think it looks really great. I like the way that looks. Then we'll just... Uh, let me get another, do I have another ring here? I've got one that I'll close up. But you guys can play around with how you like the beads to look. You could alternate bigger beads or smaller beads. You could try this with thinner leather. This is the one point, uh, the one millimeter leather. You could also do this with Chinese knotting cord, right? Wouldn't that look nice? Here's this. You don't have to put it through a loop. You can put it through anything you want, really. I am going to do this. I'm going to do my silk wrapping this time. I've got that teal Chinese knotting cord from earlier. <laughs> yeah, poor little bead. I know had to sacrifice itself, but what are you going to do? Sorry, little bead. I'm going to come in, and I like the way this teal 0.4, this is the 0.4 millimeter Chinese knotting cord, looks. And if you don't have a stash of CKC, you guys, it is really great to have a whole stable full of colors that you can just, and sizes that you can just work with. Look at how nicely that wraps. I'm not even seeing if I'm on camera. I am so um, 
focused on this. So I'm sorry if I'm going out of frame. There we go, pull this through. And we're gonna get both of these in like this, pull them together and cut everything away. I could singe this with my thread burner, but I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna come in and clip it. Chinese knotting cord, see, when I clip it, sometimes you can't get it right to the tip though, so sometimes singeing is a little cleaner. And then this, I want these cords to kind of lay on the back like that. I could even pass them back through this, um, roller bead especially with this one millimeter leather is the roller bead the hole is big so i could pass those back through like so and then i could even do like a dangle or something with these if i wanted to but i'm going to go ahead and just clip those under tension. So that way the little ends are inside. And yeah, I'll come back in and I'll use the thread burner to get that little bit of an end. Let me get all the detritus from those beads. And so this was two, four, six, eight. That ended up being eight beads because I clipped. But you can see it opens up the um you know it kind of opens everything up okay so like that so there it is okay so you could even also use this as a base for like a brick stitch or a seed bead stitch you could stitch around this um I don't know, there's so much that you could, um, that you could do with this, right? Um, so this, so from the humble beginnings of the knots from the kitchen twine, we can create some kind of interesting little pieces like this. So I hope that you enjoyed. Uh, this is Distressed Mahogany, I think, um, and these are both Distressed Gray, uh, one millimeter and then the 1.5 millimeter. And you can see in the leathers, like this Distressed Gray, it's much lighter, but it just really depends on um, what, um, whoops, what the batch looks like and stuff. So sometimes there is a little bit of variation in color, especially on the distressed, um, the distressed cords. So, so that's it. That's the one. Okay. So, uh, yeah, you could, I mean, I want you guys to go wild with this. This is just your starting point. Okay. So I'm going to take a photo right now for Drea. <laughs> you know how I like to take a photo in the middle of the show so I don't forget. So let me take that photo right now. There we go. Photo for Drea. Done and done. There we go. Perfect. Sorry. I showed my phone in there. Um, so there it is. So I, uh, I cannot wait to see where you take this finger tatting uh, or a double half hitch circle uh, knot that, uh, that my grand taught me. So, yep, Rose would be very happy to know that all of you guys are keeping your hands busy this weekend. So, um, again, thank you so, so much for um, all of your continued kind thoughts um, for my family and I. We really, really appreciate that. Um, and let me let you know what next week is going to look like. On Tuesday, I'm going to finish up that epic necklace. We're going to do the closure on that, and I'm going to show you the, um, the silk wrap loop to close it up. And then we're going to do something really fun on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. You know, 
Thank you so much for all of your orders and your order notes and your support of our small business at beadshop.com during these uh, trying times. Uh, as you know, um, you know, it's Chris and I in the office because we're practicing our safe distancing and um, going by the guidelines, the mandates of the state of California. And so it's taking us a while to fill. So uh, it's really important for me to connect for you and with you in the mornings. So next week, the broadcasts are going to be a little bit shorter, but every day you're going to have an assignment. We're going to, it's going to be really fun. So Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, you're not going to want to miss next week. Um, I think it's going to be fun. I have something cooked up for you. So I will be back uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, every morning at 8.30 a.m. to cheer you guys on. And we're going to have a little something I'm going to call the bead Olympics that start on Wednesday. Okay, so uh, have a fantastic weekend, you guys. Happy Easter this weekend. I guess it's Friday, so good Friday um, for all of those of you who celebrate. And it was Passover this last week. So um, again, thank you so much for your great thoughts and uh, your good wishes. I know that we all appreciate it. Mama, I will call you later. Hang in there. Um, Thank you so much again for all of your support during this time. Um, if you want to stay in touch, you can always go right over to beadshop.com for information on the project and the products from this broadcast. Drea, as always, will summarize this in a blog post. Um, she'll link it in the newsletter and eventually it will go up on the website. So I can't wait until I see what you guys make with this. So please post it on our um, bead table, on the bead table, which is our private Facebook group. If you're not a member, go over there, answer a few questions, and we'd love to have you join us. All right. Happy weekend, everybody. Stay safe, be creative, and we've got this. We're in it for the long haul. So be brave, be steadfast, and I'll see you next week. Thanks so much, everybody.